No, folks, this is not a Mars colony. We're at Earthship Biotexture in Taos, New Mexico. Let's go in and take a closer look. Um, Taos County has hundreds. There's actually multiple Earthship neighborhoods out here. Um, it's so popular here in Taos County that the banks will finance them. There's realtors that specialize in selling Earthships. And um, yeah, it's just it's kind of out of this world. Um, you don't hear about it, but we now have Earthship homes built in almost all 50 states and over 40 countries. So they're all over the world. Um, and what sets us apart from other off-grid homes is the fact that we build them out of garbage. This building is sitting on over 700 used tires. Thousands of bottles and cans just gives us a really cheap way to build homes, and of course, lots of natural materials like adobe and that kind of stuff. But that's kind of a general gist of what Earthships are. Hey folks, E. Chip and Robert here, uh, coming to you from Taos, New Mexico, or just outside of Taos, New Mexico, at the Earthship Biotexture uh, subdivision. We stayed in an Earthship, and we thought we'd give you a quick tour of it, show you how they're built, and uh, some of the neat features they have. You know, one of the unique things about Earthships is that uh, all of them, I believe, have this uh, greenhouse feature that is right near the atrium windows, uh, which always face south. Now, the idea behind an Earthship is that it's totally self-sustaining. It provides its own sewage, it provides its own water, it provides its own heat. Um, but one thing that it also does is, at least in theory, provide its own food. And so, um, this one, of course, is filled with ornamentals, nothing edible here, uh, because this is a rental, an Airbnb rental. But um, you know, the idea behind the Earthship is that you should be able to plant your own plants right here. So you could have tomatoes and herbs and any number of things. And this is a small place. This is a, about 600 square feet. So you don't have a lot of area to work with. But uh, what you do have, as you can see, uh, can be quite productive. So tell us about the hot water heater there. Well, this is an instant hot water heater. <clears throat> um, the moment you turn on the hot water, this kicks on and begins providing instant hot water for both the shower and the uh, kitchen. And uh, so it's kind of, a, kind of a neat idea and you know they got a pretty little appliance that they could put there so it could be a little showy. I think it's kind of cool. So are there any special um, rules or anything about this particular Earthship? Well, <clears throat> with regard to the kitchen, yeah, I mean you'll never find a garbage disposal, a disposal in an Earthship. That's because you should be composting all of your waste, um, either recycling or composting it. It will not go into a septic tank or anything like that. Little bits of food and things like that will go down into uh, a gray water holding tank, which in many um, earth ships either has a grease trap or a worm bin, an uh, earthworm bin, something like that, to process some of that waste, but not a lot. And then that wastewater is recycled right here into um, this growing bed, uh, right here at the atrium where it waters these plants. So you're not using fresh water to water these plants, you're using recycled water from your sink, from your shower, uh, and your bathroom sink. And it works out well. It's a win-win for the, for the plants, it's a win-win for the water, you're using it at least twice, and uh, it's, it's really cool. Once the water is has come through here, it is again pushed on and reused for the toilet. Uh, and so, at least in the case of the gray water, the gray water, uh, it goes from fresh to gray water and then to black water and then goes out, um, it finally has its final use out in the lagoon where it can grow ornamental plants and, and things like that. It's a really cool system. So the claim to fame of an earth ship is using passive solar energy 
to heat and cool the house, to regulate the house's internal temperature. You will not find an air conditioner here, but of course we're at you know, about 7,000 feet, uh, a little more maybe. Um, so it is a generally cooler climate. However, this desert sun can get pretty hot. And so, you know, our ships use that, and passive solar uh, houses use that to their advantage, particularly in the wintertime, to heat this floor, which is a good solid thermal mass that absorbs the sun's rays and then gives up those rays at night after the sun goes down to sort of regulate the temperature inside the house. I'm putting my hand on this part where the sun is right now, and I, I don't have a temperature gauge, unfortunately, but, but you know, I can feel it warming up. I put my hand over here where it's in shade, and it feels noticeably cooler. My guess would be, you know, 5 to 10 degrees cooler. And it's still early in the day, but this will heat up nicely during the day. And then after the sun goes down, it will begin to release that heat into the room and warm the whole house. This house, last night, uh, we got here, and it was, my guess is somewhere around 70 degrees. I don't think it got any cooler during the night than about 65. So that's pretty good temperature regulation for something that does not have any forced heat uh, or air. This is the bedroom area of the airship. You can see it's kind of a curved alcove. Um, uh, what I find appealing about this particular building, this particular earthship, is it's got a very cozy feel to it. It's pretty small, but the space is used very nicely. You can kind of see there's a wall here, and then this uh, armoire, yes, thank you, that gives it some privacy, a little privacy from the windows here in the front of the house. But I like this because it does have a sense of comfort and coziness. Another thing I like about this particular airship is I like the ceilings. Um, I guess it looks like pine probably. I don't know. But I like this feature. I think it's nice and it kind of gives it a contrast between the earth and plaster thank you, and then you know the wood. I like that contrast. I do like these light fixtures here and again maybe some people won't like this particular style of house because the only windows you do have are the ones that face the south in this particular building, in this home. And so at night it was really dark in here and I can't imagine, you know, I guess maybe it would be lighter, as Egypt said, right, when in the winter, but it was pretty dark in here last night. And being unfamiliar with this place, I was kind of making my way carefully through to get to different places in the dark. But I do like it. We did not use the heater here, the stove, but it was really nice. It did get kind of cool, but I really like this particular home. It's a pretty nice size, and for a couple of people, one or two people, this would be a pretty nice place to live. Concept behind an earth ship uh, is that you build it with a lot of recycled materials, natural materials, and um, this one's no different. Uh, true to Earthship form, uh, this house has been built with recycled tires. Um, a berm is, or a, a wall is dug into a hillside, or a berm created, and into that berm are stacked tires that are packed very tightly with earth. Um, a lot of labor involved, but uh, a really cool process. The tires are, are stacked, uh, uh, ground to as high as you need to go, packed with earth as you go, and then covered over either with a cob or a cement uh, to sort of form a nice stiff wall. Over that is placed an earthen plaster, and if you get closely you can see that this plaster has little bits of sand and straw and things like that, and it's very pretty, and uh, it's very comfortable looking. Um, it, it's, it's just very <coughs> soothing, I guess, is the word I would say. But uh, the entire side, all the sides and the rear of this structure are all built with stacked tires that have been packed with earth, covered with this cement, and then covered with this earth and plaster. It appears this part down here, this little extra buttressing, has been covered with an extra slip uh, of clay-like material, and there's some straw in it too. But then, uh, you know, very pretty, very smooth. And it just gives a nice, I don't know what it is about a curve. 
that just gives a home uh, a little bit more comfort. Look, uh, it just looks more comfortable and it's more cozy and uh, much more inviting. It's, it's very pretty, very pretty. Well, I also like the fact that the little pieces of straw in there kind of give a kind of, they're kind of shimmery in uh -huh, it. Uh -huh. It's a nice effect. And as you can see, there's also some settling that's occurred. You've got cracks here. That's kind of normal, but it's the only one that exists in the whole place. Um, so, I mean, just like any home, any home will settle a little bit over time and you get cracks up above your doors and, you know, things like that. This is no different, but... You know, having said that, this is the only crack I found in the whole house. And this whole house is made with cement and earth and plaster. So, pretty cool. The one source of heat in the whole house is this wood stove, and it does not appear to have been used for some time. As I said, this place uh, regulates its own temperature very well. Right now, it feels like about 70 degrees in here, and it's uh, still fairly uh, early in the day. Um, but of course, you know, at this elevation, Taos winters can get warm, it can get pretty cool in here. So there's a secondary source of heat if it's needed. My suspicion is it's not needed that often. We'll walk you back here to the little living area. Um, you have the kitchen on one side. The bathroom and kitchen sort of share a common wall uh, where all the plumbing occurs. And then, of course, the bathroom has its own uh, sources of water over here. But uh, this is the living area, and it is small, I will admit that. It's pretty cozy. I don't know if this was originally intended as a bedroom and then switched with the other side uh, or, or what. But still, again, very cozy, uh, very pretty. We have a skylight here to add a little light. And then one of the neat features about an Earth ship, and you want to get this, is that... This skylight will actually open to the air, allow fresh air to move around. And that skylight there is actually hinged uh, using a spring action. Normally, they fill one side of that on the opposite side of the hinge with stone to act as a ballast so that uh, the thing will automatically open and then you pull it down uh, to lock it. And lock it in right here. The idea is you take cool air from down low, in this case it would be through the front door which has a screen, and let it circulate or move the warm air up out of the skylight and it cools the home and it can do it very quickly and very efficiently. So as Eve Chip was saying, this area is really quite small, maybe eight feet from this wall to the other wall. And there is just a very small little uh, way to get from the living area into the bathroom. This particular Earthship has a high-speed Wi-Fi, the TV hooks up to Netflix and iRadio, so just because you're living kind of off-grid doesn't mean you can't have fun necessities. You know, Netflix is a great way to you know, take some time out from your busy day and binge watch some of your favorite flicks. Okay, folks, here we are in the bathroom. Um, one of the things I think is cool is because we're taking light from the outside. It's the primary lighting in here is you know this window, and because this living area back here is so much darker, they did a pretty cool thing. They installed this door that has a light in it to allow the daytime light to pass through and light that area as well. Nice idea. <clears throat> this uh, bathroom also appears to have been um, tiled and rocked and things like that with recycled material. It's really cool. They use black, a very good idea for this, because black will absorb uh, the sun's rays from this window very well and, uh, you know, give you some good, good thermal mass, um, good heating, so you don't have a cold bathroom in the morning. The toilet is right here. It's elevated because uh, it, uh, the, the waste relies on gravity to go outside over into the lagoon. The waste from the toilet you'll recall, is the third use of the water. And so its final, you know, resting place is that lagoon out there uh, in front of the home. And so we'll take you out there and show you that in a minute. But uh, it's a cute little bathroom. All right, folks, we're here at the uh, Earthship, and I thought I'd show you how this, how this place is powered. 
We've got a, a Trace SW twenty five twelve inverter. It's about a four thousand watt inverter. It um, converts uh, DC, I think probably twenty four volts, to uh, AC one hundred and twenty volts. It doesn't look like it has a two twenty capability, but in a small place like this, you don't need it. And then, of course, we've got our uh, Trace Antrex uh, charge controller, MPPT charge controller. We've got two load centers. We've got one for AC over here and one for DC over here to can disconnect. The place is, is uh, rigged for a wireless internet. As you can see, the, uh, the router is right there. And a nice little setup. Uh, we could hear it buzzing, you know, obviously, while it was on. If we wanted to, we could have hit that red switch and turned it off and had it totally quiet in here. But we were happy to use some of the power. So I thought I'd show that to you. It's a, it's a nice little setup for a... A nice small space like this, plenty of power, plenty. Cause you're